If I was French, OK, I would be quite happy to wave some of these people through. And I'm not sure. This is one of the reasons why I don't think this will work. I'm not sure just giving them money is going to be enough to entice them to keep these people on their own turf. I agree. I agree entirely. Look, I mean, I, I've mediated between many countries on border agreements, including precisely this sort of problem. One country, country A, complaining that mm. country B is allowing people who shouldn't be moving mm. across their border into country A. But that's the reality. It, we don't want these people. The French don't want them. Um, so we're both in a conundrum. The French are going to let people who they don't want leave. Yes. That's, that's the bottom line of this. Now, at the moment, part of the funding that we've already provided um, is, is funding uh, gendarmerie reservists to conduct patrols on the, on the beaches of, of the North French coast. Mm. Um, it does have some effect. And, of course, there is a resource thing, because the French have got a political argument as well. You know, why are we doing this? We don't of want, I understand the argument. want us to stop it. The British should contribute. But, and this is the real nux of it, I don't believe that this is going to stop the flow in any way whatsoever. No. Because actually the flow doesn't start there. The French don't want these people, but they don't let them into the European Union. What's happening is organised crime networks exactly. back in the, the countries of origin are actually encouraging these people to join the network. They're saying, I tell you what, you give me X amount of money, I'll get you over to the UK where you can earn more money. So see it as an investment. They're rather like a travel agency marketing their, their, their services bringing these people in. It is economic migration. These people know that they are bypassing legitimate mm. border controls. Um, but we've got to go after those crime groups. We do. We've got, we've got to... And we've got to have a deterrent. We've we got have. to have a deterrent as well, because Absolutely. at the minute, I'm sorry, but a four-star hotel somewhere, even if you do have to spend a few weeks in Manston or a detention centre, mm. that's not a deterrent as far as I'm concerned. I can now also bring into the conversation researcher from UK in a changing Europe, Joel Rellan. Joel, thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. Look, massive concerns that this is just a token effort from Rishi Suna. Have 80 million quid, Macron, and let us sit and watch some computer screens so we can tell exactly how many boats you're letting through. The French will not care. They'll take our money and continue to laugh at us, won't they? I think it's a bit early to say it's a token effort. I mean, these, these discussions have to start somewhere. And as you were alluding to in your earlier conversation, this is clearly, as all migration issues are, it's an international issue. It's about crossing a, an international body of water. And so if you want to find a more sustainable, manageable solution to what's going on, you need better cooperation between the UK and France than we're currently seeing. So, you know, creating the grounds for uh, closer conversations for potentially uh, British officials on uh, French soil, that is the start of a conversation. And I, I wouldn't be too uh, down with yet. Well, 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 the thing is, the reason why I am there is because we've already tried something similar. We've already given a boatload, if you'll excuse the pun, of cash over to the France and seen next to nothing in return. These figures that they've stopped 42% of boat crossings, I'm sorry, I just don't buy that, given the fact that we've had about 40,000 people arrive already this year. I'll stick with you, Joel, because Henry had quite a big say before, but I can't help but feel like the French are just treating us as a sugar daddy. We're tossing a load of money their way and they're just doing nothing with it. They're using us. I think there's a genuine desire on the French side to do more with the British on this. I think the sort of, you know, the big problems in these relationships over the last couple of years come back fundamentally to Brexit. That's really been where the uh, problems in the relationship have, have lain. There have been well publicised difficulties between Macron and Boris Johnson on all number of issues from fisheries to migration to the protocol. And I do think there's a sincere belief that perhaps uh, Rishi Sunak heralds a slightly different kind of relationship. You know, I think there are obvious similarities in personality between Sunak well, and Macron, this might be the start of something different.